What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the SPY, the NASDAQ, the QQQs and the futures, break down what the charts are doing today. Well, we did see a bit of a sell off in the markets and what I do anticipate to happen from this point on, could we still see a nice bounce in the markets, could we still see a small bounce or are we about to crash very hard? And before I break anything down, before I get into any more details, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account. You're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks, each worth up to $2,000. And the best part is any could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just three days. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So looking at SPY, this thing took a hit today. It ended up actually pushing up when this like fake out move to the upside. Looked like it really wanted to go. Then we got a huge rejection. After that, the algos adjusted from buying like crazy to selling. And the selling pressure did end up continuing as Apple made a new low for the year is at the lowest we've we've seen in many many years it actually closed around 126 and this is actually causing some panic amidst this time frame now the thing about apple selling off the way it is is it's very close to a demand zone first off 125 is a key zone it could try to bounce off this or what could happen is seeing it oversold it could try bouncing from here or it could actually come down a little bit more to about the zone I'm kind of like eyeing is about 121. We actually have to go back pretty far back. I think all the way back to like 2021, we saw Apple was in a key zone around this 121 support level. It actually chopped back and forth between 121 and about 130 for about two weeks back in 2021 before it got a big rally to the upside. So I'm not saying Apple is going to rally very hard, but I do believe it does have potential to bounce off either 125 or 121 so that's what i essentially see happening unless there's some very very bad news that comes out involving like the semiconductors but so far that's very unlikely so i'm still eyeing a potential bounce in the markets and i do believe this will transcend itself into spy and other things like that looking at neo it's down another two percent as i did mention to you guys we had a key zone ahead of us uh, my target would have been about 9.87 if it broke below that i'd be watching 9.5 we actually bounced off 9.61 so very very close to what i predicted once again showing how the overall setup and the sentiment in the ev sector is being affected for tesla very interesting this thing actually bounced a little bit today after the crazy selling we actually closed around 112 but i'm not super super <laughs> excuse me sorry guys super excited just yet uh, I do believe Tesla has some more potential to push up a little bit if the market bounces. If SPY gets a small bounce, Tesla could come back up to fill this gap around 122. It is still possible, but I'm still going to be very cautious because of what I said yesterday and from before, given the fundamentals and other changes to the outlook and projections on tesla you have to remember the fact that we have the new deliveries and production report for the year coming out in just a couple of days that could have a very negative effect on tesla so be very careful guys because this rally we're seeing in tesla we made a nice double bottom here a nice push up even if we push up a bit more things could change depending on the deliveries report and also the performance of the markets so now uh let me actually talk about the qqq that i'm going to end the video with spy real quick i'm going to try to make this video a little bit shorter than usual looking at the qqq this thing did take a bit of a hit seeing apple come down the way it did and spy also took a hit now i do anticipate this to balance relatively soon as well i don't think it's just going to crash this much in a shorter time frame we are respecting a falling wedge like pattern but what else is interesting is we're hitting some very key zones all right this thing bounced off 258 in the past. We also bounced off 253. I believe somewhere along the lines, maybe around 258, we could see some buyers step in. Maybe this is associated with Apple hitting 121 to 125 and bouncing. So it is still very possible. I don't think it's going to be that bad. And finally, on SPY, all right, there's something very interesting going on here because... 
when I look at the 30 minutes, I'm seeing three possibilities. This is quite oversold. We came down very hard with very little reactions in the opposite direction. We have three big gaps that formed. There's a gap to like 387, a gap to about almost 400, another gap to 385. So I do believe one of these gaps at least will get filled eventually. But before it happens, we have to see this thing bounce. Are we going to bounce? I don't know exactly when, but I believe we still have potential to do so. And I'm seeing three possibilities. Possibility number one is you could argue we have an inverse head and shoulders like formation forming right here. This being the head, these two ends being the shoulders. And we are set for a big reversal from here to fill the gap. That is a possibility. Now, there's no guarantee it's going to play out that way, though, because we are very close to that 374 level, which is where the previous gap was that formed. I can actually show you where the gap is. It's like way back here. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, look, we haven't fully, or at least I don't believe we fully filled this gap here just yet. We came very close to doing so. There's a gap around 374. So if we come down, we could actually see this thing retest 374 and then bounce. That would be correlated with Apple coming down a bit. And the most bearish thing I could think of would be us crashing to about 370 before getting the bounce. And if we do bounce, where do I see us going? I'll show you guys that in one second. Let me just draw out these levels. I'm going to be watching, hold on, 374, either right where we are right now, maybe like 376, 375. And then there's also 374. Watch this zone as well. And then if we don't bounce here, I'm going to be watching 370. One of these should be the one level where this thing actually bounces at one of these three teal lines that i'm drawing out one of these should be the one where we see a big reversal now when we reverse how high or how low are we going to go to well i actually have right here let me just hide these drawings real quick and show you guys right here look at my 20 moving average all right Notice something. What's my 20 moving average? The blue line. See the blue moving average here? Right? What does SPY do when it tends to crash? We have a tendency on, I believe it's the daily. I think it's supposed to be the weekly or the daily, one of these time frames. Uh, I think it's actually supposed to be the daily. But anyways, anyways, what tends to happen is SPY, it pushes up in these trends and it gets a big rejection. And then what happens is we tend to get a retest of the 20 moving average. So we, we come down here, we kind of retested it, we came down, we actually retested it again here from the double top, and then we got another rejection before a major sell-off, right? And then during another rally, this was back in the March rally, we get a nice push-up, we come down, then we retest the, the blue line right here, the 20 moving average, right? We get a retest of it in the counter trend rally. Then we come tumbling down. And you guys could see this actually played out many, many times. What happened recently during the August run up? We first get a push up. Okay. We come down a little bit. We retest the 20 moving average. We come all the way down. We basically crash. So we went from 428 all the way down to 384, 385. Then we get another counter rally. During this counter rally, what do we do? We break and retest the 20 moving average. And we actually pushed a little bit above it before we continued to bleed off. And now what are we essentially doing? As you guys could see, we were well below the 20 moving average. And then we just came tumbling down below it. And the 20 moving average happens to be around... Where is it? It's around $390.89. So what I'm thinking is tomorrow we might come down a little bit more. I'm anticipating that we're going to retest either 374 to 375 or 370. We could actually come all the way down there. And what's going to happen is this 20 moving average is going to start coming down a little bit more to about 390. And I believe maybe we get a bounce. Maybe going into January, we have one last push up. 
before this thing collapses and the market crashes. That still is very possible. And that's what I'm going to be eyeing. Uh, let's just wait and see where this thing bounces first. Once again, I, I went over the three possibilities. All right. We either see this inverse head and shoulders like formation play out, or we drop lower to 374 to 375, or we hit 370 and then bounce. One of those seems very likely. Now, could we just tank below 370 and start crashing? That's possible, but it's going to require some major, major catalyst, which I'm not seeing as of right now. We also have a bullish divergence on the RSI on SPY. You guys can see it right over here. This makes me still optimistic, and I still believe there's a possibility we get that counter trend rally. So anyways, I went over the main charts. I went over Tesla. I went over NEO, the QQQ, Apple. Uh, going over AMC just real quick, I think it's sets to follow what the market does. AMC is very oversold. We actually broke below $4. I did predict that that would happen. And the zone I was watching, and I mentioned this yesterday, I think, or like two days ago, is 3.87. We actually broke below that. So now we're retesting 3.8. Break below that. This thing could crash to 3.5. So still be very cautious on AMC. It is respecting a falling wedge-like pattern. So it could get a counter trend rally when the market rallies. And we could even go for this gap fill back to the fives. It could still happen temporarily before AMC crashes more into 2023. Anyways, uh, I went over all the charts. Like I said, I wanted to make this video a little bit shorter. I'm not going to talk too much about the VIX and the dollar index, but I hope you guys found some value in this video. Thank you all so much for listening. Please have a fantastic remainder of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. The market to the moon because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.